What's up, guys? So today on the podcast, Eugene and I do a live one. We originally were going to do this on the actual the Jiu Jitsu YouTube channel that we so we have the Jiu Jitsu podcast YouTube channel. Which, by the way, if you haven't subscribed to that, you should. I mean, like you're listening to it and you want to support it, and so if you want to support it, you can go subscribe and uh, help us out. Plus, if you want to like watch the video or uh, listen to the, vi- I I personally like watching video of people and stuff like that. If you want to check that out, you can go to the uh, uh, the YouTube channel, check that out. But we were going to do it on that, but there were some technical difficulties, and so we just did it on the Jiu Jitsu page like normal. And again, That's right. if, uh, uh, if you uh, if you missed that, then you missed out. But if you guys just sort of keep an eye on those things because we do those every probably about once a month or mm-hmm. maybe once every five weeks we do a live podcast. And if you want to check that out, uh, we post them up there on uh, YouTube and Instagram and everything else, and you can kind of uh, keep an eye out for that and join us here in live. It's fun, and we usually do uh, obviously some talk that we want to do then we do some questions afterwards uh so we're going to talk today about whether or not you should be in shape before you do jujitsu and if you're out of shape should you get in shape before you do jujitsu it's kind of the question i get that question a lot and so we're going to jump into it. we're going to answer it and then we've got a lot of good questions from people and then we'll jump into one i really like the ramble by the way uh the little talk that i did about uh, uh about the loss because that one connected with me. Mm-hmm. Guy lost a competition mm-hmm. and he was like real sour about it because some guy uh, was you know posted up on his social media and said he has to look at it. And I told him what to do about that. Uh, and again, it was from my experience as a, as a purple book back in the day. But anyway, um, let's jump into the podcast here in just a minute. Big thanks to our sponsors as always, Charles Webb. And, you know they've been with us for a couple of years now, and uh, again, it's been the uh, the CBD of my choice. You guys, a lot of you guys have used them, and a lot of people have sent me messages saying you really enjoyed the benefits you were getting from it. I'm happy about that. Uh, I'm excited to see that because it it makes me happy that you guys are trying something that worked for me and it's working for you as well. Uh, Again, it's one of those things where I've talked about this numerous times. I was initially super skeptical of CBD stuff because I remember hearing about CBD, I think, way back in like 2000. 13, 12, something mm-hmm. like that. And I think it was on probably like a Joe Rogan podcast or something. And uh, and I was like, Psh, you're right. I think the first time I saw it was, um, I think Nate Diaz was like smoking like a vape pen uh-huh. with CBD. Yeah. And they, like, they asked him like, what are you smoking? And he's yeah. like, CBD. Yeah. And there was like a big thing, like what, what is he doing? Is yeah. he going to get you know, fines and go to fight? Because I think he had a fight coming up. And right. He was doing it for recovery purposes. So that was the first time I kind of saw it. I was like, huh. Yeah. What is this stuff? And uh, I started using it. And I'm like, man, this stuff's awesome. You know, it's great stuff, and I, I really love the benefits. And even in the, the live stream today when I was kind of doing the, the sort of the outro version of this where I was kind of talking about our sponsors and stuff, a lot of people were like, oh, dude, help me out with this, that, whatever. And so it was cool to see that. And so, again, if you want to check it out and try out some of their products and get a discount on it, again, I, I, I talk about this as like the month challenge, right? Try a supplement out for a month, see the benefits of it, just like even like a diet, right? Give a diet a try for a month, yeah. see, the, see the effect of it. It's not going to work in a day. But give it a try for a month. You can go to their website at charlottesweb.com. Use a promo code Jujitsu to save 15% on the order. Get some of the, the the gummies or some of the tinctures or whatever it is that you want. Give those a try. And try it for a month and see if you notice a benefit. And if you do, then great. You can add it to your supplement routine. If you don't, everybody's body's a little bit different. I'm not going to lie to you. Some people, not everybody feels an effect from it. But if you're not one of those people, then good. You, you don't have to worry about it anymore. And you can move on and you can get rid of that gnawing curiosity that you have about, mm. would this work for me? But if it works for you, then great, because then you have a new supplement that could potentially help you out with your training and everything else. And again, my favorite time, if you're if you're curious, I like to use it at nighttime, about an hour before bed. Mm. Or, yeah, so hour before bed, and I use it. And then uh, thanks to our sponsors, uh, Epic Roll, epicrollbjj.com. Matt makes a lot of cool gear. I like his stuff. You know, it's it's why we throw it out there. He, Eugene just got this sweet T-shirt. You can't see I've it. Had if, this thing. if you're listening, you if you're listening to this, you can't see it. But he got a sweet uh, sweet T-shirt from him recently. He said he's he's got it, but I haven't seen it. Uh, so it's a good shirt. I like that. <laughs> uh, but my Matt, favorite's the sushi one, though. Sushi. By the way, but every, but Matt's got a lot of cool uh, stuff on there. And again, what I like about his his gear um, is, and I said this at the actual the outro part of the this episode which you'll hear is that uh, a lot of times, like I remember back in the day, all the, the old, like uh, it was like the affliction and Ed Hardy stuff I rocked, I uh-huh. rocked some affliction. Oh my like God. My I didn't thing. like it. It was like skulls and like rhinestones and griffins. And it's like, what is all this mess? You know, it's just like, <laughs> it's just like all thrown together on this shirt. And I remember looking <laughs> at it thinking like, Oh my God, it's just too busy for me. I don't, I don't like too much. I like good, clean, simple stuff. Um, you know, and again, that, that's what Matt throws out there. So if you want to check some of his stuff out, 
You can go to epicrollbjj.com, use a promo code jujitsu, check it out. Uh, and again, if you guys want to check out uh, our Patreon, which, again, besides the fact that you'd be sponsoring or essentially helping out a podcast, you're the podcast you're listening to right now, which again, you don't really care about that, right? We're all very self centered. What you, what you, I mean, we are self centered, right? Sure. What you get out of the deal, right, is the fact that when you get in there, when you, when you get access to it, you have access to years of content. You have access to conversations with other black belts and other jiu-jitsu practitioners about jiu-jitsu and all kinds of other stuff. You have we have a four-week beginners program there. We have a warm-up routine. We have a stretching routine that we've put together, like some basic routines that we use at different times. Eugene's got his. I've got mine. We've got rolling videos, narrated videos. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. There's a video we just uploaded recently, which was uh, teaching people some ideas on how to deal with the lockdown, how to study jujitsu, just some ideas on it, mm. stuff that, that was useful to me. So all that stuff's all wrapped up in it. And there's also a second tier. If you join the second tier, you get to jump in on the the live calls that I do on Sunday every two weeks. And in those, it's usually me and 10 other people. Like, it's not a very big thing. So if you've ever, like, wanted to kind of, like, be able to, like, get in and hang out and chat a little bit, that's kind of your way to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, which, it'll be a little bit different because at the time of filming this or recording this, I'm going to be going to Costa Rica tomorrow, which is Saturday. So I'll be able to squeeze it in, possibly. I just got to figure out when I'm going to do it because, uh, you know, still do it down there. But if you guys want to check that out, go to patreon.com slash the jujitsu podcast. And last thing I want to throw out there is um, a thing. Thank you for I, I, it's recently I've been talking about and a bunch of you guys have joined. Um, appreciate you guys that joined the the Chew Crew, my email list. It's an email list. You know, it is what it is. But I, I call it the Chew Crew because a lot of the stuff that's in there is not necessarily hardcore teaching jiu-jitsu a lot of it there's teaching there for that for sure but a lot of it is like ideas philosophical ideas and even sometimes we just have fun like the other day i was sharing a picture of uh with the people inside the the chew crew i was, sh I was sharing a picture of this guy who wanted to smell my feet he sent me stuff before has he weird uh, he yeah. stopped fine i think he i blocked like, him don't like my feet anymore. i think i blocked him too it was yeah. weird never pictures with his nose superimposed yeah. isn't that weird so I mean it was it, it was it was pretty gnarly. It's wrong it was it was creepy, and so I wrote a pretty good email and had a I, I got a, a few messages back from people saying that they snorted or that they spit their milk out or something. Oh, so I'm like sweet. Uh, so if you guys want to check that out, if you want to get those the, everything from silly random emails to hardcore jujitsu technique type stuff, everything in between. If you want to check that <laughs> check that out, go to jujitsu.net and there's a free ebook section where you click the button. You'll get two free resources. You'll get an, uh, an ebook on drilling. Uh, you'll also get an ebook on on uh, putting together your own jiu-jitsu game plan. And I even show my game plan that I personally use so that you can make your own. And then along with that, you get some videos and stuff like that. So all that stuff's included for free. If you go to jujitsu.net and you check that out. And uh, guys, with all that stuff out of the way, let's jump into the podcast. jump into it guys so it. uh here's a question that comes up all the time and i've talked about this a bit on the on the channel before um but uh should you train jiu-jitsu if you are not in shape should you get started in jiu-jitsu um if you're not in shape or should you first get in shape in order to you know do jiu-jitsu first like which one should come first um i'll throw out my piece and then eugene will jump in from his physical therapy mindset uh for me i I've seen it happen so many times. There's not a, I, I, it's really hard to get in shape for jujitsu. For instance, I've had so many people come from other modalities like CrossFit and um, swimming and running and all these different places. And then when they come into the gym, they still get tired. Right now, granted, they don't get tired as fast as the person that lives a complete sedentary life and anything like that. And I tend to find that people that are athletes tend to pick up jujitsu much quicker because they have a much stronger um, connection with their body. Right. Like if I tell them to move their body a certain way, they have the ability to sort of feel out their body and move in a particular way and, and, and make their body listen to the commands. You know, there's a lot of times there's a disconnect when you do something. You know, I think we've all felt this before. Even me, I remember. Um, playing the guitar I remember thinking like okay I need to like play this instrument and then there would be certain chords where you'd have to manipulate your pinky just so and I can see where I want my pinky to go and I'm I'm telling it to move but it took a lot of practice to get it to move in that direction or to move in that particular way over time and jiu-jitsu is the same way you might see the movement but then it takes a while for your body to be able to put itself in that position efficiently and there's no way to replicate that that comes from training 
Now, the one sort of thing that I would say is that if you are a bit older or if you are out of shape, like, like let's say if you've been living sedentary for you know a number of years and you haven't been very active, then you, you will be at more risk of injury. And a lot of times you experience a, a fair bit of, of small injuries in the beginning because you just, you get in weird positions and stuff like that. And, you know, the, the younger or the more healthy that your body is, the easier it can sort of absorb those. But the older that you get um, or the more out of shape you are, the, the more detrimental those things are. And so what I would say is that if you are a little bit older or if you're a little bit more out of shape, right, you haven't been on the mats. And for some of you guys like you that are in the lockdown right now, this would be good advice for you when you come back. Don't go like 100% balls to the wall, right? If you're new completely, I would probably say train for a little bit without rolling. Now, it's hard because rolling is kind of like the dessert for us, right? It's the fun part of training. It's where we get that feedback. And again, that's one of the reasons why jiu-jitsu is so addictive because it's kind of like a video game and the fact that you get this feedback, right? You do something and you get immediate feedback as to whether or not it worked and then you get to try something again, right? There's very few things in life that we get that have that kind of immediate feedback, right? Like if, for instance, if we make changes in the business or something, it's like, okay, well, let's do this and let's see how the quarter goes, right? It's gonna be several months before you really get a good idea as to how it worked. With jiu-jitsu, it's, I tried the move and shut me down or I tried, ooh, it worked, boom, I just found something new. And so it's addictive, but the you know the damage is comes from rolling like when you when you get after it and so you may in the beginning roll get yourself acclim or not roll but drill do the techniques get yourself acclimated and if you are someone that's pretty out of shape you know and again you have to be honest with yourself if you're out of shape then it would be a good idea to go get in shape off the mats right do some other stuff as well so while you're drilling and you're uh, doing all the technique and becoming acclimated and you know raising your overall knowledge of jiu-jitsu it would be a good idea to go do some strength training right strength training is huge for injury prevention do some cardio of some sort and do those and get your diet and check do all those other things along with it because that stuff's really important both for your performance and then again we I mean, we can see with what's been going on for the last about a year now how important it is to be in good shape, right? I'm not going to say that the the virus that's been spread around that you know it's not a surefire thing, right? It could it can take anyone, but we know that if you're if you've taken care of yourself and your body's in good shape, it's less likely to. So whether it's for just general health or for your ability to be effective on the mats, both of those are a good thing. And so, uh, you know, I would say that I, I wouldn't wait because a lot of times people put off things forever and then they never get started in the first place. You get started, but what you can do is you can do that at your own pace. I tell a lot of times when some of the newer people come into the gym, if they're a little bit older or a little bit, maybe they're overweight um, or if they're just really out of shape, I'll tell them, hey, why don't you just sit out of rolling today and just do this? Or when they start rolling, hey, why don't you just roll one round a day and then you sit out the rest? Ease into it because, again, it's like when I go to yoga practice. I am like the worst, like I'm the worst, as far as like ability, right? I'm, 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 I'm attentive, but as far as like absolute ability, I'm like the worst yogi ever. I go in there and I'm all stiff and tight in weird areas, you know? So they're like, just go ahead and grab the back of your foot and just bring your toes in front of your face, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you can't do that, you can use a strap or a yoga block. Um, you know, for me, I can't, I can't do a lot of the moves and obviously I'm, I'm the one struggling. I'm on the struggle bus in the, uh, in the yoga room. But it's my practice, right? And, you know, a good yoga instructor will say that, hey, it's your practice. You're doing this for you. You're not doing it for me. And same thing for your jiu-jitsu. When you go in there, you're not there for anyone else. You're there for yourself. You're there to better yourself and improve. And so, again, if you, you know, take a, do a round in, then sit out for a bit. Do a round in, take a round out. Whatever you need to do initially to get sort of going without risking injury or without, like, dying on the mat because of, out of exhaustion. <laughs> Again, it, it's not the, the smartest thing to just completely obliterate yourself in the beginning. Um, you know, you, you will get tired, you know, a lot. But um, that, that's just not a couple ideas for you guys, and I'm sure we'll throw a couple out. But, Eugene, what do you think? From, from, a, from the standpoint of a physical therapist, a doctor, for you guys listening, of physical therapy, right? This isn't some, like, random, you know, butthole on YouTube telling you whatever. <laughs> this is a guy that, like, fixes people. He's fixed me. Um, countless times and helped me get rid of like I had that shoulder issue or like over the, the lockdown and then you gave me my little exercises and I was doing those and boom man like a couple months later like it was gone I was pressing heavy weight and everything else felt great but from your standpoint what um what do you think as far as um like 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 so if, say someone's out of shape they're not in good shape like should they 
start doing jujitsu and get into it, or should they like go get in shape first and then get into jujitsu? Because m- my thing is the reason I say get started is because a lot of times, and I think you've seen this, people a lot of times when they're looking to get in shape there's a problem. They don't like exercise, right? And so, or they haven't, they at least haven't felt the benefit of exercise. Or they haven't found you, the thing. Right. The thing that's there. Well, and so what ends up happening is, is they're looking for something to get in shape because they're out of shape. And so for me, a lot of times, jiu-jitsu, what I've seen with a lot of the students is students who are not naturally like, you know, gym, gym yeah. rats like me. Yeah. They find this place where it's an easy form of fitness and they're able to get into it and it's not so... It, they can actually stay connected to it and they can actually do it. And then they get some results from it. They get mm-hmm. excited. And then what ends up happening is it does this thing where it's a catalyst for everything else where they say, okay, well, I've been doing jujitsu. I lost 10 pounds. Wow, I lost 10 pounds. Holy crap, I lost 10 pounds. What else could I do? And then they're rolling. And they're like, hey, what if what if I stopped drinking sodas, drinking like energy drinks every 10 minutes and you stopped eating donuts for lunch? I wonder how that would affect my jujitsu. And then they, you know, they clean up their diet a little bit. I was like, man, I'm feeling great. And mm-hmm. I lost 10 more pounds. Yeah. And then they said, what happens if I start strength training? And then they're rolling with someone and they like arm bar the person and they like felt strong doing yeah. it. Like, huh, what? And so you, it kind of becomes this thing where, again, because of the feedback, yeah. you, get, you get these instant feedback where, because I think that's really, to me, um, where exercise becomes addictive is when you do something and you can see a measurable result yeah. where you're like, wow, it worked. Whether that's a scale going a certain way or your body looking a certain way or when you're rolling, you feel a certain way and that's an addictive feeling. Yeah. So I think it like depends on, I, I agree. I think you you can start. I think most people, I mean, there's always, you know, there's always very exceptions. exceptions, but I think most people can and should probably start jujitsu first. I think there's multiple reasons why somebody may not be, um, you know, in great shape, Mm -hmm. you know, whether it's, you know, certain things, confidence or whatever, but like something to get the ball rolling. If it's Mm -hmm. the thing that like starts that snowball effect, then yes. The the key here is that like a lot of people, I think that, that will start jujitsu and get addicted to it and get, find this passion for jujitsu don't quite have, um, a gauge on what their body's capable of. Sure. So I think that if you have a really solid gym, a coach that kind of you can speak to or training partners that have, that have been around for a while that can guide you a little bit, I think that's where um, – it, it, is it advantageous to be in better shape before you start jiu-jitsu? Absolutely, because then l- less likely at risk of injury. Like you said, that mind-body connection's there. You know, your, your body's more resilient, mm-hmm. you know, but um, – a lot of times you need jujitsu to get that ball rolling. So I think that I would recommend probably that people start jujitsu. Don't because you can always talk yourself out of it. You can always say, "Well, well, I'm not in good enough shape yet. I'm not in good enough shape yet," and then you can just that can go on forever. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So I think that when you're, if you can do it in a safe way, in a measured way, where you're not like, "I'm training. I've never trained, and now I'm training." five days a week, Mm -hmm. twice a day, some days, whatever. Like, I mean, that's where you get in trouble. That's where these, because your body needs time to adjust, like to the stress. Like your body's able to tolerate a certain load. Right, it's capacity. Exactly, capacity, yeah. So that's that's it. Like, and you got to figure out where that is. And that will increase. Like that, your capacity to take Mm -hmm. on that, that stress and that load it is going to improve over time. Yeah. Like, you know, like you, you get to a point where you can train, you know, many, many times or roll frequently, sure. but, but you can't do that initially. Oh, no. Your body's not used to it. So yeah, I mean, I, I think it's great to get the ball rolling that way, but you have to be measured and you can't like, even though it's so addicting, mm-hmm. you have to back off. You have to kind of pump the brakes a little bit. Yeah. I mean, when I first started, we didn't have the option to train every day. Just we did, did just didn't. Right, we yeah. didn't didn't back then, um, but I remember like you know I wrestled and I was in shape and everything else and I went into jujitsu. It used so many different muscle groups that I was not used to. I was so sore the next day. I remember my hips, like the the hip flexor muscles and stuff, mm-hmm. being really sore. Pulling in, um, yeah. pulling in with the legs and doing guards. I just never done mm-hmm. it before, and uh, I was super sore. And I you know while we were talking about people getting shaped through jiu-jitsu, I want to give a bit of a shout-out, because I know some of, the, some of the students listen to this thing. Um, big shout-out to Drew. Um, he does the morning class sometimes, uh, nurse. Uh, Drew. Drew, yeah. So you, you would know him. Um, but Drew came into the gym a little over a year ago, but about a year, year and, year and some change. He came in, I think it was in March of 2019. But he came into the gym, and he uh, 
he lost, like he's lost 80 pounds. And uh, I, even today I was like looking through, you know, Instagram and stuff. And I saw that he uh, was at the gym. Yeah. Lifting weights. So I was like, I wonder, you know, was he lifting weights before or did he lose 80 pounds with jujitsu and get going and then and then get into it? Either way, I mean, the dude's lost a ton of weight, you know. And so I think that's one of the things that what's really fun about jujitsu for a lot of people and what I think becomes a useful tool as far as people's fitness goes is that jujitsu is this cardio that's fun, right? Cardio most of the time is the worst thing to do. It's the most mm. boring thing yeah, to sucks. do. You know, I mean. I, I don't mind it that much, I, but I, I'm a gym rat. So it's like I can get on the bike and I can pedal for a half an hour, 45 minutes or whatever, and just go. I can go for long walks and put in podcasts and audiobooks and things of that nature. It doesn't, doesn't bother yeah. me. And I love lifting weights. But when it comes to like training, though, training's the best cardio, like jiu jitsu. Because yeah. you're rolling, you're playing a game, and you don't even think about it. Mm hmm. I mean, six minutes flies by, you know, in, in the middle of a good roll. And sometimes so, it does. Sometimes it goes. <laughs> if you if you're getting stuck on the bottom, smashed, squeezed, you're like, oh my god, let's go, time. Um, or, or if you get really, really tired, like you, you get exhausted, your cardio's wiped, and you know you, you get that deep lung burn, and your hands are curled over, and, and like you can barely grab anything because they're so filled with blood. And then you look over, and you still got like four minutes left. You're like, oh my god. Um, yeah, it kind of drags in, but you know, again, I think that's just kind of the basic gist of it. And then the reason I ask this because it's I. I had a I had a message from a guy recently who had a situation where he he experienced a little injury, you know, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Man, Chewy, you said I should get started." And he's like, "That was inspiration for me." He's like, "But now I'm wondering, should I continue to train when I come back or should I get in shape first?" And again, it goes back to this. If you're not in shape now, I maybe I mean, people can always prove me wrong. But typically speaking, people need something to shake them up out of the routine because mm -hmm. the problem is that your routines, it, 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 your habits and your routines are set to the point where you're not going to get in shape because you're not doing anything different. Yeah. You know, this is why I, I'm not a big fan of like home workout stuff. I think it can be good if you can give it its own space. Right, like if you have like a garage or something that becomes your home workout, that's yeah. cool. But like you know, like for instance, the old P90Xs and stuff, where you'd like, all right, let's let's get out here in the the, the carpet, and it's like that's your that's your rest space. Yeah, you have you to know? separate those. You got to separate them because you're you're in a weird place, and I think that getting into a different environment, it's like a new lease on things, and you get to be in this new place, and you're doing this new thing, and there's a lot of newness to it. Yeah. And along with that, the training is is one of those things where it's very fun and it's addictive, and it's it's really good for just burning up calories. Think about the friends we have, the family really we have at the gym, right? Think oh, about yeah. that. Like oh, how yeah. motivating is that to see your training partners do better and you want to, you know, you're kind of, you may have somebody that you train with and you guys are just neck and neck and you mm -hmm. keep pushing each other and like, hey man, you're going to be there tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, I'll be there. You know, so, so you have well, even like people to hold you. Uh, yeah. Like you and Adam, I remember like watch whenever I would, it's funny, whenever I would pick you guys to roll, you guys would have battles, you know, you're just like. I mean, we don't want to give anything up. Not a thing. I remember the. <laughs> I remember there was one time in particular. It was like last year. Like we were doing a pass and defend, right, or whatever. So basically, the bottom person's trying to sweep this, the person on the yeah. top or submit them. Top person's trying to pass the guard. And uh, I remember putting you guys in there, and you know we're all going, switching up, and people are like king of the mat style. So we're all going through, and it was like a fifteen minute round. You guys never changed. You guys battled tooth and nail for the whole time because you guys were bros when you first started, right? Yeah, you were. You guys started at the same time. And so, uh, you know, there's that thing. And even when I first started, I had my buddy Chris Slater. Um, you know, yeah. he uh, he started training with me. And, man, dude, we battled all the time. And uh, I remember, he, you know, he'd catch me in an ankle lock or something, and I'd want to just take his head off yeah. and back and forth. But then we would go to competitions and we'd win together. I remember um, we went to one – one. it, it was kind of funny. When, we, when I was younger, I was a bit more uh, – what's the word? Uh, malleable, manipulable. Uh, easily able to be manipulated a bit. <laughs> and uh, you know I was young and so I remember my coach he you know the, the rivalries in the area used to be something uh in some of the politics and stuff that went on and I remember our uh our coach was like oh you know like these are the guys from the other team right and I, I'm sure he had something to do with it but we were at this competition down in Nashville and Slater and I were in the open division mm -hmm. and for our first match we both had to go against guys from one of the schools across town, one yeah. of the one of the gyms across town, like one of our rivals, and I remember uh, I beat my guy like fifteen to zero, and then Chris <laughs> he tapped his guy with like a knee on belly, 
you know, just like those, just he, he was just there holding, uh, you know, and uh, you know, just. Rough. But again, it's it is rough. But I, to get to it, yeah, we, we've made some, a lot of friends. We've had all these crazy experiences together, um, and it's 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 such a cool thing. And, it, and again, maybe that's another thing too is, you know, when you find a good gym that fits you. It's uh, it's another thing that then brings you back because we all want to belong into something, mm-hmm. right? And so it's a cool thing to where once you find that gym where you feel like you connect with people, it's such a cool thing because then you're a part of the group, yeah. And it's easy to keep going back and back and back and back because it's like you want to train, but for a lot of us, it's it's as much as training as man. I get to see my friends. Yes, you know, for me, like I feel blessed every day because when I wake up, I mean, my job is to go in and, and train and teach and work with people that I truly enjoy. Yeah, the people. I mean, like I I love the people that are inside the gym, and you know, it's uh, it's like one of those things where I'm going on the vacation tomorrow, right? Mm-hmm. Like I a week's good. A week's good for me. I wouldn't want to be gone for like two weeks or anything because I like being in the gym. I like being with the people. Yeah, you know. And so that's another thing when you get when you get training. It's it's not just a go in and work out, punch in your time clock. I mean, it is for some people, but for most people, when you get into it, it's not about just like punching your. I, I did my hour training session. All right, I'm out. Yeah, it's uh the training mixing with the bonding and everything else. Yeah, I, I think there's some responsibility on the individual too when you're showing up. Mm-hmm. Um, have an idea like talk to your coach like put some information out there let them know what your goals are possibly if there's something you know like having a good coach that's accessible that has a a minute to kind of guide you or 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 training partners that guide you that'll keep you on the mats safely Mm -hmm. or you know there's no guarantees there's no guarantee you're not going to get injured absolutely not well, there's a guarantee you're going to get injured at some you point. You probably will. You're going to get something. You I mean, probably will. Yeah. I, you know, even guys that don't have serious serious injuries, like they'll have little tweaks and you will. dings and yeah. like stuff like that. It happens. Yeah. yeah. So just know and and have some knowledge of jujitsu. Like the the internet is an amazing thing. There's so much information out there. Your channel is great for beginners as well. Like, mm-hmm. hey, basic you know guard retention or basic closed guard techniques, whatever. Have a little knowledge and having that knowledge in your head can be very beneficial when you're training mm-hmm. um, just to give you a little bit of a, a purpose and an idea on what you're trying to achieve too yeah. so you're not just like flailing around giving your back up or something you have no idea what jujitsu really is so have some knowledge there that would be helpful um you know and, and then strength train like you said that that's huge 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 probably one of the biggest things most important things the the narrative of like that we used to hear like all you need to do is jujitsu. Uh-huh. Like you're finding that is less and less far, like further from the truth. Like it's further from the truth now that that strength training is not it, beneficial. It absolutely is for for performance and for injury prevention. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's huge. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 useful. It's just another tool in the box, right? And um, I was going to say something, and it just slipped my mind. Had a little brain fart. Yeah, it's all right. What were we talking about just a second ago? Coaches, good coaches. coaches. Oh yeah, yeah. Here we go. There so go. if uh, he just had to jog it, <laughs> jog I, that, jog I, that I, I'm brain. an old Buick sometimes. Body, body. Here, <laughs> um, <laughs> old Buick. Old Buick. That's what I say to someone. I said, oh my god. That was training with him. I was like, I, I, it was. I was going with the young guy. I said, I'm an old Buick. Give me a minute. I got to warm it up. Once I'm warming up, though, I'll go with you. Yeah. Um, but uh, going back to what you're saying, if you if you have any reservations because you are, you know, overweight, you're out of shape, you're this, you're that, whatever. Let you, whoever's teaching you just let them know. Yeah, you know, in, unless they're like, if you go into a gym and you say, "Hey, l- listen, coach, I, uh, I, I mean, I have not been active in ten years, and uh, I'm just nervous. I don't want to get hurt. Whatever. Is it okay if I just do technique and not roll? If that person like does anything to like make you feel bad or make fun of you, or whatever, just leave. That is the wrong it's not gym. The right place. And, uh, and and by the way, like if someone ever made you feel comfortable, don't worry about being polite sometimes here's here's what i say it's one thing if they are make you uncomfortable because they're getting you to work harder or something like that it's a different thing if people are chipping at you or or making you feel uncomfortable for something like you know if you were saying that you were concerned about it yeah what i mean is there was one time i went to one like i I was telling you guys about me being terrible yoga well um i went to a yoga my first yoga the first yoga studio that i went to was this super and, and I can say this because I've been to multiple yoga studios that are not like this. So I just thought this was the way they were. Super snooty. I went in and first off, no, and I'm a business owner. So I, I look at these things from that perspective. Sure. I walk in. Nobody says, 
hey, sir, how are you? What can we help you with? Like the receptionist is just sitting there uh-huh. and I'm this new person and new people like me in this place and people come into our gym, they do this. They give off a certain look, which is I'm lost. I have no idea where I'm going, yeah. you know? And um, nobody said anything to me. So eventually I go up to them, hey, and whatever. And she she directs me to the class. So I go into this class. And... Um, I mean, I literally went in and did this whole class and did not talk to a single person. No one came up to check with me or anything like that. Um, but I was like, okay, I guess this is just how yoga is, right? Uh, I was so used to the gym where everybody's so, hey, what's going on, man? How right, are you, right. right? Like, how's it going? You need some help with that? Whatever. Well, one day I go into this this particular yoga studio, and it was funny because I had a – there was one class that was like was a, an assistant instructor. She was pretty good. And then later on I go in, and uh, like later on that week, and I remember it was on a Sunday I get there, and uh, it was like the owner of the place, right? The owner of this place, this yoga studio. And it's funny because when I when I say her name to people that are in the yoga community, they go, "Oh yeah, that's her." <laughs> like that's the way she is. Anyway, we go in this class, and you know, she lets us know from the beginning that we're gonna run like a legit hot yoga class today, right? The, the name of the thing, right? It's like you guys most of the time, this is what we haven't set up. We're sitting at the real number. Oh, Uh-oh. okay, great, right? So then she's like walking around, and you know, I was told by all the people because it's my practice right it's your practice here that's what they always say right well i'm i've got a strap and i've got yoga blocks because i need them to do, get into certain poses without screwing them up so we're doing this one with the quad my quads and hip flexors are tight mm-hmm. so i have to use that strap to pull it up and uh she's walking behind you know just just kind of viewing us and she she just sort of casually says in that that voice yeah, so if you're using a strap, it's kind of cheating, but, you know, it's okay today. And she just kind of walks past. Oh. And I remember dropping it, and I was like, huh. And I sat there for a second. Because, again, to me, this is the same as some guy who maybe has something going on in the mat, and I'm going to I'm gonna help adjust them, right? Here, let's find something that works for you, mm-hmm. not I'm going to make you feel bad about it. So I sat there. I said, no, I'm not doing this. I, I put my, uh, put my, wrapped up my, my yoga mat and she goes, is everything okay? Oh, no, but I'm out of here. You know, just then left, you know, and then I, then I went to another yoga studio and mm-hmm. found a good one. So going back to it, if you ever go to a gym and again, there's times where, you know, your coach will be there to help push you and help get you. Cause sometimes we all like need a little bit of a push. Sometimes we're all yeah. being uh, like just soft or not getting after it like we should. And yeah. your coach is there to help push you. But there's other times, especially in the beginning, when they're trying to help get you going. Like if they, if you're starting to make like, like, because I've had people come into the gym that have told me this. You can always find another gym out there. You know, there's usually gyms out there that you can mm-hmm. check out. Um, so again, if you're if you're concerned for your health and safety, and someone makes you feel bad about that, that may not be the place you want to train at. Yeah, you know. And I think gyms are a lot better about it now than they used to be. You know, we oh talk yeah. To some old school guys, <laughs> and it's just like you sink or swim. We're gonna beat the brakes off you, and uh, if you can handle it, great. You're meant to be here. If you can't, it's different now. Bro, it was for sink, sure. Back in the day, it was sink or swim, kill or be killed. I mean, my so you know, it's funny because today. You know, like, it, for instance, white belts can't even, like, do knee bars and stuff in competitions. You can't knee bar? Right. I mean, back when I first started, first off, knee bars and ankle locks were everyone could do them. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, white belt tournaments, you could do heel hooks. I, you know, back in my day. Um, and then I remember the very first submission that my coach caught me in was a knee bar. Now, luckily, I'd been watching fighting, so I knew what a knee bar was. I just never felt one, really. Mm-hmm. But he put, he, I was, like, basically, we were in a situation, and I, I got to his back, like, a wrestling position. And in wrestling, you'd split the legs. Yes. And he rolled under me, got the knee bar, and that was his first submission. Now I, I knew to tap and stuff, but I think about now, like, you know, you know, again, how many other people would have come in there who did not watch stuff like I did and get involved in it like I did, and they could have been jacked up from that knee bar, mm-hmm. you know? But I, but I know what to do. Well, if, if it's your coach too, they'll probably know to kind of let go. There was one time, literally, like when I first started, and. uh I was caught like in an arm bar and I literally stood up and was trying to shuck the person oh, no. off. And like, and the coach at the time was like, no, nah, let, let him go. And mm-hmm. like, my arm was super sore, but you're a white belt and you don't know shit. Yeah. Like you're like, oh, I'm going to just muscle my way out of this yeah. thing against like a, a way more skilled, you know, practitioner who's, you know, fought MMA and stuff right. too, which, you know, yeah. So, so you have good, good coaches are there, you know, to, to guide you and, and you have good training partners. Like mm-hmm. if somebody catches you in something, they're obviously know they have it locked in. They're going to let go. They should let go. Should. Um, doesn't always happen, but I usually choke white belts like brand new ones. Yeah. Cause they don't know anything. 
But if I get to, if I take your back and lock you up in a position, you can't really wiggle out of it. Yeah, there's no there's no denying a choke. Yeah. I mean, that's it. Right, because the choke's. Oh, I that's feel it. it right. So that you know they know to tap. Whereas with the arm bar, sometimes you know, <laughs> I've had like guys in there and they're like doing this. And you know, in this instance though, like this can be something worth. And I know we're just kind of going off the tangents because we've answered the question that I plan to answer. Um, but. Uh, like a lot of times I'll have those guys and I'll have them in arm bars and unless they do some big wig out or something, I'll just hold them there yep. and see, like, like, like I got gotcha, you, you know, and it's actually a good test of, can you hold a submission? Do you have real control yeah. of it? Or do you just have to do it real quick, but you don't have real good control of it? A lot of times if people can wiggle out of that stuff pretty easily, you don't have the best control. So it's something worth doing where you want to test it out. I know that one of my black belts, uh, Nate, Nate will get to the very end of the submission and fight for a little bit. And him mm -hmm. and I, like, this is how we roll. If I get him in an arm bar, he knows I'm not going to just pop it, and he'll fight a second. Because sometimes, like, I remember when we first started rolling, he'd pop out of the arm bar sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, he'd push off the head and stuff. And I had to really get good at controlling and then holding it for a second in, like, 1-1,000. One, one <laughs> and then he'd be like, all right, you got me. You know, that kind of thing. So, yeah. yeah. Um, well, usually, like, when you when you make the eye contact with them, they're usually all right. Like, yeah. You, you kind of hold it, and then you stare at them for a minute, and they're like, all right. You know, that, that usually that usually gets the point across. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I think keeping everybody safe is, is so important. So, like, having just, the, you know, obviously starting jiu-jitsu at any time is great. Uh, but having a good gym culture is also really vital, I think, to keeping people coming back. You mm -hmm. know, having welcoming, having great upper belts, too, yep. you know. Yeah, I mean, and there's a time to be dangerous. And, like, when you get into, like, hardcore training – that's more dangerous training. That's where injuries happen and stuff. And it is what it is. It's just, you know, it's just performance, right? There's, it, you know, it's for instance, it's it's like a, a Camry. A Camry can uh, is a good car that'll just run forever, right? But then if you get some like really high performance sports car where you've got, you've, you've mm -hmm. done all the work to it and this darn thing has, you know, a, a thousand, you know, pounds of torque or something at the wheels, right? Like that thing is going to break down all the time. You know, it'll probably have maintenance that needs to be done. And yeah. It's not the thing that you want to have as your grocery getter, right? It, it takes up more fuel. It needs more work, more constantly. It's a different, it's a different animal. But if you needed to get somewhere and have a race, that's your, that's your thing. Yep. Same thing for competitions. Competitive training has its place, but it's the stuff that's going to absorb. It's, it's more energy, right? So you're going to have to be fueled up for that stuff. Uh, it's the stuff that's going to need, like, that's going to require maintenance on your body because it's going to really damage you up. Uh, so you have to make sure you keep that into account, you know, because yeah. you'll get you'll be, get dinged up and stuff. Um, but if you want to win a competition, it's what's necessary. And then, you know, there's other times where you can kind of go into Camry mode. You can go to grocery getter mode. <laughs> And like, right for me, for instance, I'm an older guy, and I'm not old, but I'm I'm a, I'm a newer model, but I've got a lot of mileage on the body, and I just shared that with you guys because you guys, you're not, not old. I know I'm not old, but I'm still like, I've been I've been grappling competitively in some fashion for 20 years. Yeah, you know, more and half your life. Yeah, yeah, more than half my life. I've been grappling. It's absurd. It's crazy. Um, you just don't think about it like that, right? Like I remember some of the old guys that back in the day would say, I've been trained jiu-jitsu for nine years, like when I was in my first year or two. And I'm just thinking, God, you old bastards. Now mm -hmm. I've been training for jiu-jitsu and wrestling for 20, right? And fighting MMA and everything else. And so it's one of those things where I've got some damage from it, which is okay. I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's one of those things where when I train, I'll go hard before the competitions, Right, and I'll really push myself and do all the extra cardio and all this stuff. And then when it's not, I back off. I train, and I'll still get down and train hard enough. But I train is like a, a sort of a different pace, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm not trying to kill myself all the time, um, you know. And and it's just the way it is. And so you kind of undulate between the two. Mm -hmm. Have those times where those those gears where I turn it up, and then I have the times where I don't. Yeah. Now, when you're a bit younger, if you're if you're just young, you can probably train harder a lot more. Um, but it's a, it's a useful lesson even to back off the pedal a little bit sometimes too, and give yourself a rest so that this way you don't, you know, damage your body as you get older. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I guess to wrap this thing up, cause we're just starting to kind of just dance in circles. I would tell you guys, um, if you are out of shape or if you're wanting to get into jujitsu and you're not in the best shape or if you're older, whatever, get started, just maybe uh, don't, um, don't go like rolling full speed. Talk to your coach and say, hey, listen, coach, I'm, I'm concerned about me being out of shape. I haven't really done anything active in some years or I'm a little bit older. You know, I don't want to get a bunch of injuries right out of the gate. Uh, is it okay if I just do the drilling and the techniques and not roll for a bit? And then after a while, as you get more comfortable and more knowledgeable, you can start to roll and kind of get into it and then ease yourself into that that fun part of training. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. I, I think it's it, it's a great way to start that that, you know, 
journey into being healthier mm-hmm. and you know mental health even physical health oh dude mental health's huge it's huge i mean i i had a I had a student tell me like i've had a few students come into the gym who've told me that being around the group and being training and stuff is you know i had one guy who told me he said chewy like the day before i came into the gym i was watching buses go by and I was just thinking, man, I could jump out in front of one of those things, Isn't that and, insane, and, and dude. it would and it would be over. And it was someone he like he he was really I I, I want to do this. I want to just jump in front of this bus. And he came and trained, and he had these people pull him in, you know, and say it's all right, man. And then uh, even one of my other students, he sent me a message. Um, he actually replied to one of my emails that I sent out, and uh, I mean, he it was a I don't want to get into the, the details of it, but it was graphic. You know, he was going mm-hmm. he was going through it, man, like really going yeah. through something. And he said that you know just being a part of the gym, being able to train in spite of everything that was going on in his life right now this year has sort of kept him steady, you know, and uh, kept him from wanting to do terrible stuff, you know. And again, you know, whether someone wants to poo-poo on that or or not, you know, because I've seen people say, well, because someone will say, like, it really helps with my mental health. And they'll, you know, they'll they'll poo-poo on the idea, like, you can do something else for your mental health. Well, this is probably true. But at the same time, if it's working for you, you know, like I know several people who've gotten off of things like SSRIs and things like that. And again, I'm not a doctor and don't take my medical advice because it's not medical advice. But I'm just saying I've talked to people who are students, who people I respect, who were taking like anti-anxiety medications and things like that. And they got off of them from training. Mm-hmm. It's so neat, you know. And even when you look at the, when you look at the thing that our body is meant to move and exercise and be, be exerted and you see the effects mentally and all of the... Um, cognitive benefits from it and you see that and you're like oh it only, sure. it only makes sense that we're supposed to do this our bodies are not meant to be sedentary you know and so when we move we get all these benefits from it and uh both like physical and mental no and I, I agree 100 percent. i mean like the lockdown is a perfect example of that like what are you, you see people their bodies like start to you know just double in size almost yeah. they, they they you know you get depressed or or you start eating more or mm-hmm. like whatever i mean it's just so it's such a there's such a correlation it's well, undeniable n- not to mention that but freaking the the isolation for people that's the worst like remember coming to the gym and saying each other like hey we're here that was fun it was like we're finally gonna see people again it's weird it, it was weird initially it's like you know being around people you know it, it was it's great so you know I feel bad for everybody like some places that are on severe lockdown that can't even you know see their buddies but it'll get back soon it will we'll be there all right guys let's uh let's do some q a all right i'm gonna q a time i'm gonna go through this here and uh take a gander at what you guys left uh over the course of the chat and then we'll pick some questions from you we'll start to send them start sending them and we'll look uh we'll start at the top and chewy you're going to costa rica I'm going to costa rica yeah, tomorrow yeah buddy. leave for costa rica that sounds awesome um it's a fun trip yeah, Justin uh, Justin Court, one of our brown belts, puts that on every year. It's awesome. Kenry Griffin, I'm glad you made it. He said he finally made it to a live show. I'm glad you're here, bro. I assume Kenry's a, a male name. I don't know. Kenry? Kenry, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a cool name. Let's see. You know what? Here's here's a thing. Um, this is from Umar uh, Sheik. He says, uh, I think it's important to have the right culture at your gym you're going to. If you're new and clearly out of shape, no one should try to wreck you. I agree to a certain degree, although I, I, I say this. Like, everybody's different. I'm glad I got wrecked. I wasn't out of shape when I started, but I'm glad I got wrecked. Because it was fun. Because for me, like being a stubborn knucklehead, the fact that I got wrecked made me say, okay, I'm bought in. The fact that I couldn't do anything to you guys sign me up I want to do this if they hadn't wrecked me I don't know that I wouldn't have kept doing it yeah there, there's see but you are already kind of an athlete yeah. at that time like yeah. if you're someone that's really unathletic and you're kind of self esteem is kind of low and just you're just like don't feel very confident and you go show up at a gym and like you're almost like oh see this wasn't for me you know yeah that's a hard thing for some people so i think like i think it's all in the way that people do it in the way that the people do the wrecking because you can right. wreck someone and be building them up the whole time right right right, right? Absolutely. like you know for instance i i was rolling with one of my white belts and i was just i was just wrecking him you know <laughs> and he's a young guy you know um but i was still being like we were being pleasant i was cracking jokes with him and stuff like that but there was nothing negative about it you know it's a Again, it's this uh we're just kind of doing this dance or whatever and, and going back and forth but i um 
you know, I, I think it's the way that you do it. You know, there's there's a super aggressive, like I'm gonna smash the crap out of you and I'm not gonna help you back up. But there's also a I'm gonna put a little smash on you. I'm gonna show you a couple things as we go and help you out a little bit along yeah, the way. Yeah. All right, Chewy. Anybody that you know, I think we got some guys that and, and girls that train Miles says, What about training BJJ with asthma? Any uh anything about that any caveats about that well i would first say consult your doctor consult your doctor consult your doctor to make sure whatever's going on because again i don't know what kind of asthma you have whatever with that said i know several people who train with it and they'll have their little inhaler chad yeah. has asthma um chad does mm-hmm. he has he used to have an inhaler he doesn't act like it yeah um <laughs> <laughs> uh but you know chad had asthma i mean I, I think he still does but i think yeah. he outgrew some of the symptoms yeah but uh he had asthma and he would have his little inhaler on the side sometimes and he'd need it um so again c- can talk to your doctor but i think it's perfectly reasonable to say that unless you have some I mean, I mean there might be some crazy extreme case but you know unless For there sure. is you should be able to get some sort of training in yeah. You know, I, I think it's reasonable. I think so, yeah. I think you just you have to listen to your body. You have to know like what you're capable of. Have obviously your inhaler yes. or your medication with you and just know like, hey, I and and I'm I think it'll get better over time. Like your capacity to train will get better even with asthma. Of right. course it will. Well, and this is um, the thing about jujitsu too, and this is this is martial arts and, and athletics in general. One of the most beautiful things that it does is it gets you in connection with your body because most people, you talked about this earlier, do not know what they're actually capable of. Sure. You know, it, it goes so many different ways. So for instance, you'll have people that used to be athletes and then they get into some sort of training and they remember being athletic, but they forgot. And then they, you know, realize, oh crap, my body is not athletic anymore. Yeah. You know, their, their 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 perception of what's capable is not true. Then there's the other way around where people have they've never used their body, so they don't even know what they're feeling half the time. And through doing the exercises and stuff, they start to feel their body in a different way um, and get in tune with it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they realize a capacity that they never thought was possible. Right. Um, but either way, I think it's really useful because you know I talk to people all the time like. They don't even, there's no feeling. Even people like, for instance, they, they eat terrible diets. You really have no idea how bad your diet is and what it's doing to you until you've gotten off of it. <laughs> That's such a great point. Bro, I'm telling you right now, it's amazing because when you when you clean up that diet, and I don't want to use the word clean, but when you eat like real food that you made yeah. yourself, that you actually prepared all that stuff, when you eat that kind of diet 100%, and then you know maybe save a little bit from time to time, like a meal a meal a week or something. But when you eat that kind of food, when you eat something bad and you realize the effect it was having on you, it makes you think, "Whoa, this is how I yeah. felt all the time. I didn't even realize it because you don't have contrast." Yes. Um, and so I think it's a good thing to to have it for um, for for contrast and to be able to feel your body. Here's a here's a good question. Actually, I, sure. I really think uh, this is a good one. Uh, Lance Velasquez, because there's there's different options here. Okay. So Lance asks. How do you feel uh, about Gracie University when you don't have a school around you and you're not looking to do competitions? Hmm. Well, I mean, it's like this. If you just want to learn some jiu-jitsu and stuff, I mean, you could do something. Um, the, the, here's the problem, I guess. The issue is, is that it's so hard to learn jiu-jitsu without some connection. Here's In 2020, here's what I would say. If, if I was was a white belt living, or not a white belt, a, a non-belt, a person not training. And I was living in a place that did not have a school readily available to me. Here's what I would do. I would find the nearest school that was within reasonable traveling distance that had someone like a decent instructor, and I would take some regular trip there, maybe once a month, every two weeks, whatever I could could swing, and I would go train with that person. And then I would take back whatever I was finding from them, and I would take it back, and I would get some buddies together, and then we would get together, and we would train, and I could probably augment with some instructional courses and things like yes. that. Um, but I would want to have uh, I would want to have that apprenticeship, and the reason being is because I. I can tell you 100 percent that you're going you're not going to get all the details from watching a video it, it's you can get a lot but unless you have the the unless you're getting some like hands-on tutelage from a coach especially early on now as you get older and, and get more experienced you can get a little bit you can get by further with instructionals but in the beginning it's a person that's trying to piece this stuff together and you don't know what it feels like i remember that was like one of the most surprising things i remember like my first couple of classes in jiu jitsu i had rolled with my buddies we had wrestled and uh we had we had gotten instructional courses and all this stuff 
watch videos online. Uh, we, we couldn't really watch them online. We actually had to go to, uh, I actually had to buy VHS tapes and we would watch matches and then we would break down what they were doing. Yeah. But either way, we were doing this stuff. And then when I was training with my coach, I remember feeling him do stuff and I was like, whoa. This is completely different. And I, he would do things to me, and it would make me realize that the stuff that I was doing was all wrong because I, I didn't actually feel what it was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And so the thing is, is you could train whatever online course you want to, and it could be a great augmentation, but it's not going to replace the real thing. And I would not, and this is just me, and I, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, I wouldn't put too much, put too much, uh, What's the word? Stock. I wouldn't. What's the word? I wouldn't put too much trust in your jujitsu. Otherwise, like it, unless you get it, unless you really deal with someone directly, I wouldn't put too much trust in your jujitsu that you would be able to roll effectively or that you would be able to defend yourself effectively. Yeah. Um. Should you need it, unless you're in an environment where you have someone giving you a little bit of hands-on teaching, and then you're also being subjected to like rolling with people who you don't know necessarily all the time. Like you go into a gym sometimes, do you get these different roles with different people? Yeah. It's a great experience because then you're you're having these different stimuluses come at you. Yep, for sure. And uh, you have to learn how to deal with stress. You know, and so it's one of those things where I think it's it's such a good environment for that kind of stuff to help help you out for those things. And again, you may not want to compete, but I'm just saying as an example. Um, but I think it would be worthwhile to say, okay, look around your area, find gyms that could be within reasonable traveling distance, you know, and then travel, you know, two, three hours. I used to do this all the time. I used to travel three hours every, th- every Thursday, um, to go train with Sean, go and travel and then learn a little something and come on back, get some buddies together. You can guys can do whatever online stuff you want to, but have that coach that can see you because if you go train with them, then they're going to be able to see, ah, oh, man, this guy's getting better. Or here's a detail. And you can take those details back to train with your friends or, or whatever you're going to do. I mean, you're going to have some, you're going to have to have training partners at some point. Um, you know, I, I'm assuming you were going to get your friends and get some mats at home, but yeah. that'd be, that would be what I would do honestly at this point. I think the appeal of Gracie university is that it has like this structured kind of course material and you almost get like these attaboys like good job like here's a you know you get a strike whatever i don't know what their system is but like i think there is an appeal that is structured in a certain way which Mm -hmm. i think it probably they do very well um and there's like a community of of some sort but like it's all theoretical it's all like you, you know in my mind i could you know i could watch all the kung fu in the world but as i mean it's gonna i'll be able to do a kick without yeah. actually doing it well it's it's like people well, that, doing it but just well here, here's a great example it's a it's a reason why like there's tons of people bro that watched john donaher external instructionals that mean that, that there's not 90 99 percent of them are not winning tournaments using those moves mm-hmm. no, 99 percent of them are not doing this stuff all the time because yeah. you can watch something watching something's great and it's probably less, it's probably more than, it's probably less than 99%. There's probably like probably like a 5 to 10% group sure. that, that's really taking the action on this stuff, right? Um, but most instructionals, unfortunately, and again, it's just the nature of the beast, right? They collect dust for at least for a little while. And so it's one of those things where you got to put that stuff into action. And, sure. and you have to have people to do it with. And learning that stuff, especially if you can learn it, there's just something about it. And I, and I can't, and it's just the feeling of it. I've had people... Like, for instance, when I go to seminars, if a coach does something and I can't quite put it together, I'll say, hey, can you put me in that? I, I need to feel it. Because if I can feel it, it's a different beast. Yeah. Like, oh, that's what it's supposed to feel like. And there's something to that. And so, um, you know, again, it's not to, to put a knock on anything because I, I, I'm sure um, those guys with the Grace University probably do a great job of structuring it and everything oh, yeah. else together. I just, I, I think that there's no substitute for like direct on hands-on learning. I just don't think there's a way around it. Yeah. Got one from Emil. Says, I lost my first competition recently, and I see my L on both of my competitors. Social media <laughs> got armbarred and guillotine and sub only. Good to, good to use this as motivation to improve, or could it be bad? So here's one for you. So, a good story. I think it... Yeah, I got, a, I got a good story for you. So so you got submitted, and it's okay. It happens. Um you know what I on one of my it's not it wasn't even a smartphone it was an old flip phone. I remember back in two thousand and seven, I got submitted by a guy uh, by a guillotine. I mean, I remember it. Let me let me put a little spice on this story. So, it was an invite tournament for money, and there was two guys from our gym that went into this thing. There was me on one side of the bracket, 
And then the other guy was, he was okay. He was a good wrestler and it was like, okay, jujitsu, but he's a good wrestler. And, uh, but he didn't take jujitsu seriously. He wasn't really into it. Me though. Like, I love it. I love jujitsu and I, whatever. And so we're on opposite in the bracket. Now people were expecting me to do pretty well. First match I go against this guy. I get guillotine choke. I'm like, wow. Pissed. Right now, my friend who, you know, who didn't take jujitsu seriously, was a better wrestler than me. And, uh, you know, he knew how to, he knew how to play the points game, and everything else. He ended up winning the thing. Mm-hmm. I was so jealous. I was so angry because I was just like, you don't even care about this stuff and you're just killing it. And then me over here, I love this stuff and I didn't even make it out of the first damn round. Mm-hmm. And I was so frustrated with it. And I remember I took the picture of me losing and, uh, I, I took it and I put it on my phone. And I looked at that picture every single day. Every time I flipped my phone up, I would see the picture of me getting choked out. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to remember that feeling because I didn't like it. And I didn't want it to be, I, and again, it's not me, right? It's just something that happened to me. It's not who I am. But at the same time, I wanted to remember that sting. So this way I, I would push myself harder in training. I would be more dedicated. I would work on my wrestling. I would do all the things I knew I needed to do in order to improve. And so with you, man, those L's don't feel good, right? But again, that's how that that's really what defines champions, right? It's not about how things are going when you're winning, because that's easy. Things are when th- when you're winning, everything's good. It's like how do you respond when things suck? How do you respond when you're losing? How do you respond when you make mistakes? Those are the things that are are changing, and it's the way that you respond to those that really determine everything. And so, yeah, I would I would save those pictures. I'd save them. Take those pictures of you getting guillotine. Put them on your phone. Take a look at them every every now and then just to remind yourself of the sting, right? Make sure that you work on those escapes. Make sure you work on the defenses to those things. Like really do the work that needs to be done. If you uh, if you slacked off for with your cardio or whatever before that competition, make sure that doesn't happen again. Do whatever you know you need to do to improve for the next one. But remember that. Like don't let those – because here's the thing. A lot of times people want to take – all the stuff, all their experiences, all the negative stuff, and they want to put that stuff behind them, right? That's what people will say to you. They'll say, man, just put that behind you as if to like forget about it. But it's all that stuff that's behind you that really that's where some of the the best stuff you got. That's what makes who you who you are. So for instance, for me, the way I think about it, imagine a road. You're traveling down this road. It's a good idea every now and then to go back and look over that road to see what's sticking out. Because when you look over it, you'll find things there sticking out. And those are the things, those are the lessons to be learned. Those are the things, the resources for the future. Those are the things that you need going in. And for you, you don't want to forget about the match. You don't want to erase it. You want to remember it. You want to remember that you got beat at this competition and this way you can fix it. And so I would say instead of trying to like, don't be angry at them for posting on their social media, by the way, because you'd probably do the same thing. Um, just take the picture, save it, have it on your phone, put it in like you can make a, a photo, like a photo album in your, your phone and put it like as inspiration and look through those photos from time to time. And remember that you got beat and remember the sting that was associated with it. Remember what it felt like to have to be standing there with the other person getting their hand raised and then train your butt off and get better for the next one. That's mm-hmm. what I tell you. Yeah. I think one of my best performances came after some some terrible losses. Oh know? yeah, it was just such a great motivator. It it, it stings, it mm-hmm. stings, and it, and it's painful. And if you love jujitsu or you care about what you're doing and it's important to you, it's going to sting. It's just going to you. Sure. And then uh, and plus it was I think you said you're a white belt first comp. So I mean, well, and, and that's the thing too is the 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 earlier you are in your competition sort of career, the more the more it hurts, man. You know, because it's it's almost like um, it's like in life, right? Anytime it's the first thing that you that it happens, it's always a big deal, right? So, for instance, if you everybody remembers their first relationship that went south, it's yeah. the biggest deal in the world, right? It's like oh, the, your first love breaks up with you, or your first girlfriend cheats on you, or something, or whatever. Like it's it's, oh, it's, it's the biggest End of the deal. world. Yeah. And then later on, you get older, and you're like Psh, whatever. Stuff happens. It's the way this works, you know? Um, and that's just most of the things in life. Like, you know, the first time it happens, it's a big deal. Or even the first couple times it happens, a big deal. But as you get older, you just kind of realize that's just part of it. You know, and, you know, seasoned competitors as they get older, nobody likes losing, right? Like, if I get beat, I don't like losing. But it doesn't have that same sting that it did when I was younger. But again, if you have that sting, 
it's negative emotions are a powerful thing. Don't let anybody fool you, right? Because there's all that like self-help guru garbage out there that's like, just think positive, you know, that kind of stuff. If you listen to a lot of really successful people, if you go read through a lot of biographies of really successful people, you'll find that a lot of times there's an, a negative emotion-based motivator somewhere in there, right? Like, um, you know, one that that one of them that I used to listen to several years ago that was like one of my part of my morning routine when I would like wake up real early and want to get myself motivized. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, you ever seen that Charlie Murphy skit? Uh, was it on? Uh... They should should should. Yeah, I don't like remember. Motivized. Anyway, um, but uh, was that rock uh, talk where he was talking about just like remembering being broke, remembering being a kid and seeing all this stuff going on and then being like, all right, I'm going to go forward, mm. you know? And so again, use that as motivator. Like the, the negative stuff's not a bad thing. It's only a bad thing if you, if you consider yourself, like for instance, it's only a bad thing if you identify with it. If you look at it and say, I suck, I whatever, this kind of stuff, that kind of like self-pity garbage then it's a problem. But if you look at it and say, you know what, I got choked, but it ain't gonna happen again. I got choked, but I'm gonna get better from this. The way that you perceive that and the story that you tell yourself can make the, the difference between how you react to this thing. And so again, use that negative sting that you got from the competition and, and push forward. <laughs> Long tangent, that was a good one. So it says, uh, Chewing is from Sid. He said, Chewing Jean. Uh, I'm a smaller new belt, new blue belt, 138, 130 pounds. Uh, I feel like I'm... Uh, Never practice my top game as when I roll, I always get smashed. Any tips to work on retaining top position? Hmm. Well, yeah. So let me let me think about it this way. So one of the things that I, uh, that happens a lot of times, and I've seen this with a lot of smaller guys, is they get really good at the bottom game because they have to. Mm -hmm. Right? It's where they it's where they've got to be. It, it, let's flip it around. Wrestlers, as an example. Wrestlers who come into jiu-jitsu, they are always wanting to be on top because it's where they feel comfortable and they'll always go for takedowns. They will not pull guard if, if you know, you could have money on there. You're like, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you pull guard. Uh -uh. Right? I'm taking people down, right? <laughs> um, and especially with the, the wrestling mindset where it's, it's all about winning, right? And so they don't want to be on their backs and because they don't feel like they're, they're going to, it's not going to be a comfortable position. You know, my coach had to force me on my back by giving me a directive. Like, you have to be on your back, and that's the way it's going to be. You're not allowed to start on top or, or go over takedowns. Mm. Well, a lot of times what happens with, with the jiu-jitsu guys who get into jiu-jitsu who aren't naturally top players. Yeah. They, uh, they turn into, you know, they turn into these, like, comfortable little bottom feeders. They just, like, they're just comfortable to be on their back. Like, someone will, like, breathe on them the wrong way, and they'll fall back. They just like, oh, I'll just play my guard, right? They, they, <laughs> like there's guys that I, I've, I've had before where, I mean, they had beautiful guard games, but I mean, you would look at them the wrong way and they'd fall over on their back. I'm like, bro, stay on top. And so the first thing is, I think it starts with a mentality, right? And the mentality is, is like, remember those bracelets when we were kids? What would Jesus do? Remember those? Uh -huh. What would a wrestler do, right? Like what would a top player do? And a lot of times people give up way too early on top. So like, for instance, like the smaller guys who are comfortable in their backs, they'll just kind of flop over. They don't hold position as if they, it was their, their life depended on it, right? But when you look at like a top player who's like a wrestler or someone that has a terrible bottom game, they hold on to that top position like their life depends on it. They don't just give it up. And so it's a mindset shift first because you gotta you gotta think I can't be on my back. And if someone like knocks you over, you gotta get up to your feet mm. and you gotta try to go back. You gotta do everything you can to stay on top. And if they put you on your back, it's because they fought and they nailed you there. That's where you. I think it starts first. The next thing is that you're smaller. And so you're going to have to learn how to float a little bit because if you get in there and get really, really tight, for instance, bigger guys are like, especially if they're a good deal bigger than you, which is, which isn't, you know, there's probably plenty of guys north of 200 in your gym. They're going to be able to just roll you over. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you, so if you're not really, really low and there's a way to do this, if you really lower your hips and you play like a side control, I probably wouldn't advise going to mount all the time just because you're going to be straight on. If I was, whenever I'm a smaller, whenever, whenever I'm the smaller of the opponents, I almost always play side control and go for the back. Uh, I don't typically go for mount because when you go to mount, the person has a nice straight push and they can really launch you. Um, but you could also play neon belly a bit too, neon belly side control and back. And then when you're playing that, be ready to move because if they try to explode up just to knock you off, be ready to like move around and post your hands, post your feet, whatever you need to do. You've got to play a little bit loose. Um, 
you know, you got to be tight, but you got to be ready to play loose. I remember when I was uh, when I was training as a blue belt, there was a guy that came into the gym. I was about 185 pounds at the time, and this guy was about 260. He was athletic. He played football at UofL, and he was he was like a, a Ohio State champion wrestler. Yeah, tough dude. And uh, I remember if I, if my weight was off a little bit in mount or side control, he would lift me. And it was a great lesson because then I had to learn how to post my hands. And, and basically, even though I'm really tight, I always have to be ready to, to loosen up and float around a little bit. And so uh, going back to it with your top position, you got to think like a top player. You cannot think like a, I, you can't think of it as, as to be okay on the bottom, at least for a time, right? You have to really think about, I'm going to smash this person. And then the other thing is, is that when you go against those people, you've got to be ready to float around a little bit. So you got to be tight. And like I said, I would encourage you to use side control, knee on bellies, back mounts, things like that. And then be ready to move and be ready to abandon position if need be just to maintain the top position uh, and so you don't get rolled over. Uh, th- those are excellent. Like uh, like the the mindset uh, portion that you just mentioned in the beginning was uh, that's huge. Like, like it's like you have to fight. Like, like your life depends on it. You know, like, mm-hmm. like your goal is to stay on top. So, like, yeah, if you have, if you're comfortable on your back, you're you're okay giving up the takedown or giving up the you know the sweep. It's mm-hmm. oh, I'm where I want to be anyway. Right. So, it's good to have that in your back pocket. Yeah, but like you know, you're never going to develop that if you're just comfortable playing in that position. So, um, the floating part, yeah, as well. Like you know, because you can kind of you got to know when to apply pressure and when to kind of let off as you feel somebody because if you lock up too tight. They're just going to move you, mm-hmm. you know? It, so especially skilled, bigger guys are a little bit, you know, have a little skill and they yep. know how to position their hips. So yeah, the mindset thing I think is, is where it begins. Well, it's just, it, to me, it always starts with that, right? Because it, it's just one of those things where you really got to limit yourself to those positions and it starts up in an old noggin. Well, it, and it's also a bad habit, you know, to have, like, I remember at a tournament, I, I did fairly well, but like I gave up top mm-hmm. and I gave up points. It's like, you never want to do that. You know, I was like, I didn't give it. I, I just kind of didn't fight it. I just kind of sat back to my butt. Well, like you said, I'm comfortable here. Yeah. This is where I want to be, you know. But, yeah, you got you to gotta fight for it. Don't give anything up. And, you know, if you end up there, great. You know what to do. But the, mm-hmm. and the positional positional rolling, I think, is great. You know, start you know, starting the positions that you're weakest in mm-hmm. when you're training. I think that's a great way to put yourself there, force yourself to be there. You that's did right. that with triangle chokes when you f- were first starting out, oh, right? Oh, yeah. The so. triangle chokes. I played my guard. I did that with my uh, my side control escapes. Yeah. I mean, like any position that I ever, if I ever want to get better at a position, I always do positional sparring more because it's, I mean, time and position. Yep. It's as simple as that. If you want to get better at anything, time and position. That's correct. It's point. just, it's the way it works. Mm-hmm. Um, we got one from, it looks like Wood right here. This wood. One. This one right below. Yep. I had trouble with my uh, with anxiety when I started being out of shape. Plus, uh, okay, I thought he said he was uh, that he was having trouble with anxiety. Never mind. We'll keep on moving on. All right. I thought I was. I thought he was having trouble with anxiety right now. I was going to tell him to breathe. Breathe. Let's see. We got one from Devante. Um, I think he, he's actually one of the guys at the gym. Uh, he says, "Chewy, can I get some recommendations on healthy food that tastes delicious to include in my diet? Um, come to class three to four days a week. Love it. Uh, but I want to be." Uh, more fit and to get better jiu-jitsu. So, uh, cool, man. Uh, let's take a look. Um, foods that are... I, I mean, here's the thing. You've got to lose the idea of delicious, right? Like, Because delicious is different for everyone. Tastes good works for me, <laughs> right? Like, like it has to be like... It has to be good, right? But I don't need... I, here's the thing about me when I'm eating. I'm not eating most of the time, especially now. I'm not eating for... Uh, because I want everything to taste good. It's like I just I just need it to, to fill me up. Um, here's a couple ideas. One is I um I I first off chick, baked chicken is one of the, the staples of the diet. Baked chicken and then in some sort of beef, right? Those are the things I eat the most as far as meat sources go. Um, one of the things that was helpful with uh with when I was cutting weight for the pans and I was trying to lose some weight, um, it was I would get this like sugar free barbecue sauce. Uh, Mm. it's got like some splint in it. So, you know, it's got some stuff in it, but I was trying to lose weight. So do what you got to do. Um, but, uh, it tastes pretty good. It was actually like pretty good barbecue sauce. They sell it. You can go to any grocery store. They'll have it. It's got, um, 
it's like it's it's like it's Hughes's. I think it's it's H U G H or something like that. Like that, it's the Hughes sugar free barbecue sauce. Just look for it; you'll find it. Um, and I would put that on my chicken, and it would taste pretty damn good. Um, but again, for me, like rice with some, and then I'll do like ground beef. I'll just like smash up the ground beef and do some lean ground beef with uh, like different curries and stuff like that in it. Yeah, and some some spinach, rice, and ground beef, dude. That's a good meal for me. And like I I, I think it tastes delicious. Um, and then, you know, some other stuff you can do, you can do, um, uh, you know, one of the things I like as far as like a, if I, if I got a sweet tooth is I, there's protein that I, I, you can use it pretty much most casein proteins. Um, I use a protein, it's a whey and casein blend called ump, uh, UMP. Hmm. It's really good. It's the best tasting damn protein I've ever had in my life. I buy it by like, like I buy like six tubs at a time or whatever, but I'll have two scoops of that before I go to bed, hmm. which gives me about 20, 40 grams of protein. And, uh, but it, I'll just put a little bit of water in it and mix it up and it makes like this pudding. Oh wow. It's delicious. I'll actually have to do some videos on it. I, I've got some old cooking videos on the channel, but, uh, I'll, uh, I'll go through and make a couple more, but, um, and you can actually look on the channel, Devante. I've got a couple old videos where I was cooking and, um, like doing crock pot meals and stuff like that. That stuff tastes delicious. Um, but I'll put up some videos here soon, to kind of talk about some of that stuff. But uh, for me, it's, it's again, I'm not eating necessarily for taste always. I'm eating for the effect that I want. Um, and so, but I'll do some videos for you coming up soon because I'm sure it would be helpful for you, you and some of the guys in the gym. And then uh, thanks to Davis underscore USMC for, uh, for joining up on the Jiu Jitsu membership. So, yeah, in case you guys didn't know, there's a, we, we have like a 99 cent jiu jitsu membership just on the YouTube channel. We just started it. Uh, Spartan's been taking some like sort of behind the scenes stuff, and like at the end of classes, we'll have uh, I'll typically do a QA with everybody, and he'll take bits and pieces of that and make some extra videos from it. And if you guys want those, you can it's 99 cents, it's a, it's a buck, so you can join mm -hmm. in and you can get the you can see the see the little the emoji right there. Yeah, what is it? Go down to it right there. See, uh -huh. down below, it's a oh, belt. Well. That one, yeah, oh, so, okay, I see that. Yeah, one. So, yeah, he's, yeah. so he's got the belt now. Right um, on. But uh, yeah, if you guys want to check it out, you can just press join on the channel. I mean, it's, it's a buck. How about rehab for the shoulder? Let's talk about that. Since you've had a, that's for uh, Robson Suarez. Mm -hmm. So uh, rehab, and then I think you put prehab. Uh, I mean, I think there's a lot depends of depends on what's going a on. A lot of options. Dude, here. the shoulders, a, the shoulders, a complicated joint, man. Like it depends on what's wrong with your shoulder. Yeah, there's. A, I mean, getting. Uh, I think the the most. The, the basic answer is get an assessment, obviously. Yeah. See somebody that knows. But if it's like general, say like general stiffness in the shoulder, you know, there's, there's, um, you can look up controlled articular rotations, which are like these joint circles you can do. Mm -hmm. um, I have a video on my YouTube channel that, that has like the whole body controlled articular rotations. Mm -hmm. I, I use that as part of my warm up uh, when I'm running class and stuff. So um, that's great. Just warming up the joint, moving it through its full range of motion. You can do, definitely, we talked about. Um, you know, working the scapular muscles, the, the rotator cuff, things like that. I have a um, shoulder health ebook as well. You guys can yeah. look at. Um, um, and, and, and those cars, the C A R uh, control, C A R S yeah. controlled articular rotations. Yeah, those actually they helped me out a bunch. I uh, because earlier this year I had a, a little shoulder tweak, and um, he had me doing a couple exercises, um, but and that was one of them, and that helped out a bunch. And but I would definitely say like. Before you say like, hey, what kind of stuff do I need to do for my shoulders? You should probably hire someone, a guy like Eugene, who can take a look at your shoulder and go, okay, you're you're tight here, you're loose here, you're this is hurt, whatever. And they can actually give you some assessments rather than kind of like going into it blind. Now you can go online and you can. There's all kinds of stuff. Like, <laughs> I um I was trying to figure out what was wrong with my shoulder once, and I had a I had a a, a, sp a strained subscapularis. Is that is it? Subscapul what? Mm? Subscapularis? Yeah. Okay, I said it right. Okay, it's been a while. Subscap. So that's like an internal rotator. So yes. it, does, it does this movement. Yes, internal rotation. So I was. It was bothering me, and I did this test where the lift off test off my back. Uh -huh. So I yeah. put my hand behind my back, and I did this thing because I was I was looking at how to assess myself. Yeah. And I remember I was like, oh, it's a sub it's a subscap pull. So I sent Eugene <laughs> a message, and I said, hey man, I think I pulled my subscap. And he said, well, he's like, what makes you think this? And I gave him the 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 reason it was injured, what happened, and the test I did. He's like, yep, sounds like it. Sure enough, he did a test, and it was that. And he uh, he put some you, some. You can kind of figure some stuff out. Like I think like if it's just like a little tweak, you know, yeah. it's not like don't don't. 
don't like if you can't lift your arm that that's a serious issue but like if you just feel like some general stiffness soreness some tightness i mean you could find some decent things online like start with just the controlled articular rotations those joint circles those can be you know do them in a pain-free range that's very important as well um and then nothing you should do should be painful like don't don't push through pain that's never a good idea um but you could try some basic things like that and just see how it goes. And general rotator cuff strengthening is never a bad idea for prehab. Just the, the stronger your arms are, the better. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you guys have a great uh, grappling power program, which hits a lot of the checks, a lot of the boxes um, for what? just general strengthening. And, yeah. and you're doing basic lifts. You know, you're doing push, you're doing some pull, you're doing squats. You know, uh, it has it has kind of the basics there that you can kind of start with. So I think general strengthening is really um, really important. Yeah, one of the things I'm actually doing a lot of work on right now is my rear delts and my upper back, mm-hmm. uh, and basically f- doing all this stuff that pulls me back. And uh, because again, from jujitsu and from some other stuff, my body wants to round forward. Yeah, and I can definitely feel it being tighter in the upper back. Um, here's this one was I think meant as a joke, but I want to answer it anyway. Sure. Um, where is it? I'm gonna bring it up right here because I got a fun story to share with you guys. So, uh, OU Cap'n says. Have you ever used a BGJ 9000 dummy before? If so, what are your thoughts on its effectiveness? <laughs> you probably you probably know my thoughts on BGJ dummies. Man, listen, I'm okay. If, if you can use a dummy and, and use one and actually use it, man, my, more power to you. Go use it, sucker. Here's my stories with BGJ dummies. One of my buddies, so it was me and two other guys that did jiu-jitsu. We lived in a house together, and he bought a jiu-jitsu dummy. And um, you never use it, did you? Well, his, his plan was to use it to drill and do stuff like that when he couldn't make it to the gym. And what that dummy ended up becoming was a, I mean, a glorified like like gag around the house. So I remember what we <laughs> uh-huh. we would we would set it up in different places to scare the crap out of people. I remember, uh, you know, we we would set them up at the table, like, and so when someone would come in in the morning, they'd like, oh god, there's thought they thought someone was sitting there. We, we named him Larry. Uh-huh. Um, I remember <laughs> one time I took Larry, Larry the dummy, and I leaned him against my bedroom door. My girlfriend oh my at the God. time was staying over there, so she slept there. And I closed the door, and I put it up on top of the door. And so, you know, I left to go to work, but when she opened the door, the dummy fell on her. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it freaked her out, and she sent me a text message. She's like, you, you know, all pissed off. Um, but, you know, <laughs> it, I remember one time I uh, – I, I got one in my basement just sitting there. It freaks people out. I, I sat Larry at the, at the, at the, uh, at the bath in the toilet one time just oh. to mess with people. But anyway, uh, so that's what he got used for, and eventually my buddy sold him. And then uh, we had one at the gym because uh, one of the women that used to train with us who was like, I mean, she was really training all the time, and she was training a lot. And then she said, I'm going to drill with a grappling dummy. And I'm like, okay. And she got the grappling dummy. And it ended up becoming kind of like another Larry where we would just like put him in poses and, and have fun with him. And eventually she came and collected him and sold him off to someone. And so I think they're great if you can use them. Now, I have had a couple of students use them a little bit. Um, and the, the price on them has probably gone down. I mean, back in the day, they used to be like 500 bucks. I think they probably the, – that BJJ 9000, that what they were talking about? I don't know. Those are like very rigid and stiff. They like have like this – like wire circular like bottom half uh-huh. and then it's got like a torso on these two arms so you can actually stand up on them okay. and, uh, or you can like climb on them and stuff they're very different I, I don't know like they have like a whole like videos on yeah. how you can use them so i mean i don't know here's my thing if you were asking me for, as a coach right um and even someone that did that went through the lockdown right because that's why a lot of people are using these things I spent more time just focusing on my body. I did a lot of stretching. I did a lot of solo movements. A um, buddy of mine has a uh, thing called Gold Medal Bodies. It's called GMB. Uh, he's a uh, jiu-jitsu practitioner who was a judo black belt and also is a junior like junior national like a, like a, a gymnast or something. Uh, but he does all this crazy like all the all the animal movement type stuff. All that crazy movement where you watch people move and it just it's so cool to watch them just do some hand walks or whatever and they can just do it so smoothly. I, I did that course and I did that because I wanted to do different stuff with my body and, and my thinking behind it is, is that if I can get my body to do all kinds of weird stuff and put myself in weird positions that I'll be able to adapt those to jiu-jitsu more effectively and I'll be able to learn jiu-jitsu more effectively and it's not going to be as big of a deal. And the reason I base that off of is I remember when 
my coach uh, at the time, Hanato Tavares, came in and did a seminar. He taught us. He did like we did this like hour long warm up session essentially of gymnastica natural drills, which are very similar, where you're doing all these different yeah, movements yeah, and stuff. Movements. Yeah, so we're doing all those movements for like an hour before. Well, I remember I kept practicing those movements. I just thought they were a good warm up, and it was something fun that I could do sometimes. It was a little different, and I remember I practiced them for like several months. And I remember going, starting to roll with uh, different people and being a, being in weird places, but still having balance and still being able to figure my way through it because mm-hmm. I had improved quality of movement with my body. Yeah. And so for me, it's like jujitsu is movement. So if I can move better, I can do jujitsu better. You know, and again, I, I I find it more intellectually stimulating than just banging out reps on a dummy. Um, now that said, I do know a few people. There's a few that 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 drill with their dummies. So if you can do it, do it. Um, but otherwise, I would do something else. Those are a thousand bucks. Thousand bucks? Yeah, for a thousand bucks, no way. You get a membership to a gym for like. Eight well, months. the gyms might be locked down. I bet, but you know, the gyms might be locked down. I bet you could pay someone to be your jujitsu training partner for less than a. Th- <laughs> like, hey, buddy, will you be my partner for a couple months? I'll oh pay gosh. you a hundred. I'll pay you a hundred bucks. I bet you could pay someone a hundred bucks a month to be your jujitsu partner. Yeah, come over for a couple times. Oh man, um, let's see here. John uh, Medij says, "Chewy, can I come and train at your gym if I roll through next year? I'll pay, obviously. Well, yeah, man, come and train. And by the way, you don't have to pay. Like, if you're just stopping by, now if you're training for a while, it's fine. But if you're just stopping by for a training session, you don't have to pay. Just come in and train. If you really enjoy the gym, you have a great time, buy some shirts and stuff to take home with you. Um, but, uh, you know, you get to just kind of train with us and be be perfectly happy to host you. This is a great question. <laughs> it's a funny one. What's I don't that? know. Have you ever uh, called out a fake black belt? Uh, Yeah. You have? Yeah. A jiu-jitsu fake black belt? Uh Uh-huh. So this is... I don't know this story. This is actually before you. Um, This is right before you. Um, So back in uh, in the day... Do um, tell. 2000... Actually, you may have been right around the time you started training with us, but back in like 2010... um, You you were 2010, weren't you? Yeah. No, no, no. You were 2009. Okay, so it's when you it's when you first came was two thousand nine. It might have been either nine? it was two thousand nine, two thousand ten. I can't remember actually two thousand ten because I just got a sponsorship that I was looking for. Okay, that's right. Um, so two thousand ten. So you were around at the time. So there was um a guy. Um, so th- this this cycle that exists in our city basically does this thing where all these MMA gyms pop up and you'll have like all these and it was worse back in the day. You'd have all these yahoos like teaching MMA. And they had no business teaching anything. They were like, they, they, they didn't know what the hell they were doing. <laughs> it was like some guy that did karate for a couple of weeks decided that he's going to teach. Um, and I, the, for the life of me, I can't understand why people would train with these people. Because I'm to, physically, I'm one of these people, I'm like, show me, like physically, either at some point or now, I need to physically have seen that you've done something. Because I'm a, I'm kind of a might makes right guy in that kind of sense. Like I need to see that you have the tools, mm-hmm. right? So it's like you know if you're um, an overweight guy that can't move very well, and you're trying to teach me something, I'm like, well, did you do something at some point? Like you know, for instance, Carlson uh, Gracie he was a bigger guy when he was older, but man, back in the day, dude was a monster, right? Yeah. And you saw him do it, right? But this guy, but these guys were never never done anything, right? But they they do these gyms, and you know they were terrible because I mean, here's an example. One time, one of our fighters went against one of their one of their guys. This guy that I'm gonna get ready to talk about, right? Well, when they fought against him, or my student fought against him, my student was slated to fight at 145. Their fighter weighed at 169. What? Listen. So basically, what happened was is the 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 this is when the commission was still new in the area, oh, and they said, hey guys, listen, we're gonna be testing for marijuana. So if you get popped, it's 125 bucks for you. So if you if you've done something, just leave now. And like half the room left. Just leave. Just well, they just told me to leave. So half the room left, right? Because they didn't want to they wouldn't get popped with a fine. So we're there. So then now they're like, uh, well, you fight this guy. And they're mixing things up as best they can. And uh, they said this guy's like he's 169. And I looked at my my buddy Brandon. And I was like, Brandon. Mm-hmm. I was like, you got this. And he's like, okay. Because he's thinking, dude, we're, I'm giving up a lot of weight. Well, Brandon got in the fight with him. He took him down. And, I mean, he started punching him. He put, yeah. the dude had to have plates put in his face. Oh, jeez. Right? Terrible stuff. Right? But the guy wasn't, he was not prepared for that kind of battle. Right? Now, going to that guy, he had this radio commercial. And this radio commercial was terrible. 
right? It was, and I didn't know anything about it because I didn't really listen to uh, the main radio stations, right? I was listening to audiobooks and stuff, but it was, it was this thing's like, hey there, do you want to, and they got some radio personality to do it too, you know, and it was like, hey there, do you want to do Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, and boxing, Muay Thai, like this kind of Muay stuff, Thai. Muay Thai, I remember, <laughs> I remember eventually I heard it, the guy said Muay Thai, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai, and then they, you know, they on his website and everything, all the, the branding was black belt, and uh, there was this little forum that all of us, uh, uh, all the coaches and a lot of the people in the MMA uh, area were were kind of on at the time, right? These forums, mm. and I remember I got on there. I was like, "Bro, this dude's not a black belt." But I just started. I was like, I was kind of irritated, you know, mm. and because I was like, you know, I don't care what you want to do, but don't lie, you know. And then uh, later on, he took down the the, the black belt jiu jitsu part was taken down later on, and said it was just like you know everything else, but the guy never did anything else. Yeah, and uh, but yeah, I, I called him out for it. He he called me up and. You know, and I, I was, you know, he he was like, "Oh man, listen," you know, he just tried to backtrack, and I'm like, "Bro, just just be real. Like, you're not a black belt jujitsu. If you want to be, go get go get one, but don't say that you are and and whatever." It, and it's again, people like that it was frustrate me. I'm like, dude, look, like, just go do something. Like, mm. just stop being a, like, I don't care what you want to be. Stop being a faker and just go do something. Yeah. I, I think you put a lot of people in danger though. Like, oh, like you said, that's the thing. Like, people trust you that you have the skill set, and you can be showing them something that's completely it's criminal. Yeah, it is because you're that, endangering their that, life. Well, you, you, he endangered that guy who got into a fight, who thought he could fight because he trained with his guy, and he could. He, and the kid was actually scrappy. He could have been pretty good, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but again, he got with the wrong person, and he went in there. And again, it's just like what, like yeah, what are you doing? Again, and, and it's all for this this ego trip, you know. And it was actually kind of funny because later on, like so, this is kind of around the same time. I did a seminar at this little this little hole in the wall gym somewhere, and those some of those guys came. And I rolled with everybody, right? I rolled, I'm smoking everybody, right? And so and so I find out later on, and I think this was kind of like one of the last straws too, is afterwards, that guy who was there that I eventually called up for being a fake black belt, he was there, I rolled with him, and I'm just dancing around him. It's like easy. It's like, it's like he was like, he was, he was worse than like my three month white belt, right? I mean, just basic fundamentals were not there, right? And afterwards he was just telling everybody, well, you know, he did all that stuff, but it wouldn't work in a fight. Bro, I, we were just trained jujitsu. Like I, I fought at the time. I was fighting everybody at the time. So I was like, "Dude, get out of here!" You know. Yeah. But he, he, of course, he didn't say it to my face. Um. But I, I heard from people telling me afterwards. So yeah, I've, I've had, I've had those kind of run-ins. You know. Um. It's a dangerous game to play. It's just, it's, again, it, it, you realize, you know, to me, it's like with those people, it's like your, your ego is such in control. Again, ego, your ego is a tool. It's, it's useful for what it's useful, sure. whatever. But your ego is in such control of you. That you're lying to people just so that you can have some sort—I of, guess some sort of gratification about being in control of something yeah. else. You know, I don't know what kind of weird thing that is, but yeah. All right, I don't know. If we got any more questions? Might let's be see. Near in the end, Chewy. Let's let's do this real fast. What up? I want to ask you, since uh, somebody's asking about some kind of ESPN box or some peanuts or something. Oh, uh, they were asking about that. Yeah, but yeah. before we get into that, I want to ask you, what's your prediction? My prediction: Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier. Let's talk about this. Oh man, you so, know, you know what I think would be the best thing uh, for for Dustin to do is take mm, him down, but he yeah. won't do it. He's gonna he's gonna bang with him. He's gonna he's gonna try to stand up. My thing is is I'm so excited for this fight. I've every time I've went against Conor, with the exception of I guess with the exception of Diaz number one. Yeah, I've always been wrong. Like he always comes out and does something he's good, yeah. you know. It's like he's a good fighter. Um, Poirier's a good fighter too. You know, I I'm so bad at these man because too, I don't watch as much fighting as I used to because I'm like I, it starts so late. Yeah, but I'll be watching that fight tomorrow. Um, Both those guys have been around for a while, so you kind of know. And and Dustin's been fighting consistently, yeah. and dude, he's he seems so durable. And they fought at 145, now it's 155. Mm -hmm. So I think like. There's got to be some difference in like being able to take a punch. If you're dehydrated, yeah. your body mm -hmm. can maybe not take a punch. It's hard as to well. say. I, I, my 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 gut instincts tell me McGregor, um, but I won't be upset if Poirier wins. I think he. Will, I, I think if it's Poirier, he might wear him down and like because because I think Conor has been really it, he only well, fought I mean, like a minute and a half right in well, a year and Conor like I mean he tends to that's where he tends to poop out. I mean like we'll you know, I mean because he, well, he I mean just, just to let. 
Traditionally, mm-hmm. the longer the fight goes, he tends to have a little bit of trouble. But he's so dangerous that he puts people down yeah, early. He does. Uh, and so it's like one of those things where maybe if it goes longer, maybe Poirier can win. Who do you guys think is going to win? Got McGregor in round two. I wouldn't be, I would not be mad at either one. Uh, I don't know. Like, I think, I think I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick McGregor. McGregor. But, but I, I don't, I don't know what No, the I get what are. you're saying. It's, it's not like we're, we're not, we're not saying it's a world apart and it's a fight. You never know what's going to happen, but it's just one of those things yeah. where, you know. If Dustin can just throw volume and just throw volume at him, I think it can get him, but. Nick Diaz versus Nate Diaz, MMA wise. Oh my god, they're um, so much fun! Both those guys are so much fun to watch. Man, you know, probably, probably Nick. I think Nick. Nick, I liked. I like. You know, I I remember watching one of the first fights that I saw Nick fight. He was fighting. A, who did he fight? He was fighting a, a guy, and I forgot the the car with the UFC car was like I think the guy's name was Jeremy something. He was he inch, the guy that he fought ended up eventually getting on the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, season where they were trying to make their way back in, mm. but he was the guy, and I don't know if it was true, but he like left to like hang out with this girl. You know what I'm talking about? Um, like, he's a blonde haired guy. I don't know. If I but anyway, he, I remember seeing him then, and he had like beautiful jujitsu, was doing arm bars and stuff like that. And then um, I remember watching him fight Robbie Lawler when Robbie Lawler was like doing his first run in the UFC. Where scary fella. Well, this was like Robbie Lawler first time through. Mm-hmm. And, you know, where he's scary. People, he just, he's, you know, 19 years old. He's just folding people. And, uh, you know, N- Nick was out there, like, hitting him and making fun of him and, and saying jabbed stuff to him. him. Like, he, like, jabbed him, I think. And- well, but I'm saying, but he was doing it the whole fight. Or, and he was just talking to him. And, you know, Big John's telling him whatever. But um, those dudes, uh, you know, terrific fighters, you know. But uh, I would probably say, uh, probably, uh, you know, if I had to choose one, Nick, but I think it's just because that was like the first one. Yeah, he's like, the original. I, like when I got into, like, well, I mean, for me, it was the first one. For Nate, and for some people, it's probably Nate was their first experience mm-hmm. with the Diaz brothers, right? Because they got into MMA later. For me, when I got into MMA, in, especially like 2001, 2002, I saw Nick in like 2003, and I was like, oh my God, this dude's pretty good. He's good on the feet and the it's ground and everything else. He's fun to watch. So I remember my favorite fight of his, which was a no contest. But uh, it was a uh, Gomi when he, I think Gogo plotted. Gogo plotted Gomi and got taken away from. Cause oh of, my god! And it was a pride. Those it was the only pride I think they had in the in U.S. America. in America. Yeah, they had an outdoor they had, event. Like, everybody they had like Fedor yeah. and everybody they had Noguera. Such a good card. I know all those and Strikeforce used to put on some hella good cards. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think we were in the one where we were in Nashville. No, or? it was uh, Cincinnati. We saw Cincinnati. Uh, we, Josh Barnett. We saw Josh Barnett. Man, but the fight that that that, that Strikeforce card, the, the the fight that got me was. Um, Daniel Cormier, Cormier when he fought. went against Bigfoot. Oh, you remember hearing that? That that was I was talking about the the, oh. the his fist hit his head and it sounded like a gunshot went off and I mean the whole crowd went quiet for a moment and then the big guy fell and then it, I was like, "Oh my god." I you know, just the loud crack of that. Dude. Dude, that's crazy. A crack that's audible for, you know, in a in, in a big arena like that. That's I mean, that's some that's scary. And and Cormier is like this little pudgy yeah pudgy heavyweight and you're like who is this dude he was incredible and then uh jeremy jackson trey jeremy jackson. trey Scholl. yes that was it that was the fight with Jer- that was my first fight that i saw nick diaz with jeremy jackson there yeah. you go yeah um trey trey told me that he was listening he caught up on all the podcasts it took him a few months but he caught up He's got i was it. like dude you're a uh, you're committed appreciate especially it. especially if you endured through some of those early ones oh there's some of those <laughs> like rough. like when we were uh talking through the fart can <laughs> How dare you? Hello, hey, hey there, Eugene. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's uh, we'll wrap it up. We got any more questions? Send them down there. Maybe answer one more. Let's see. Um. So, Chewy, mm-hmm. what we got planned? Anything? Anything on the horizon? Anything you want to mention? Um. Well, I'm going to Costa Rica this you week. Um, Don't rub it in, sir. Yeah. Uh, things coming up. Well, uh, so in March, April, just giving you guys kind of an early heads up. Uh, March, April, we'll have a uh, March or April. I say April. I sound like, like I'm full. Uh, March <laughs> or April, we'll, uh, I'm having an origin gi made. And yeah. so you guys will be able to get your hands on those. I think it's cool looking. Yeah. Well, and there's two of them. So um, 
I'm, I'm gonna, I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna call it. I might call it like the Gemini launch or something because there'll be two geese, right? It's Gemini's two. Yeah. Um, but there'll be a, there'll be a white and a, a black version that you can get your hands on. And uh, I should have my book should be. I have like a little book. It's, it's mainly like a fundamentals book for like white belts, some ideas and stuff. I don't I didn't want to get too technique heavy in a book, although I might include a uh, fundamentals like course with it. Uh, just to help out, uh, but that book should be ready in the next month or two. So just kind of keep your uh, your eyes looking on the lookout for that, and uh, yeah, and uh, that's that's that. So yeah, yeah, and we got uh, I mean sponsors. Thanks to our sponsors as always. Chewy, you want to yeah, so say a word or two. So thanks to our sponsor, first one, Charlotte's Web. If you guys have watched the podcast or listened to the podcast, you you know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm a big fan of CBD for a lot of you guys that if you can take it, right? Because I know that sometimes there's weird stuff. Um, you know, origin geese the balls. I don't know what that means. I think balls. it means they're good. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I don't sorry, know. I got distracted. I said balls. Um, but uh, again, if you guys are, <laughs> if, if you're someone that's training a bunch, I really like it for, for stuff. I know that the first time I got into CBD products was, I was uh, jacked up with a shoulder injury, and I remember I had this nagging injury in my back where every time I would train hard, my my the muscles in my upper shoulders and my back would flare up. And I remember one of the guys came up to me, rubbed the CBD balm on my back. I didn't think anything of it, but I remember um, when it was sore, I would have to be hunched over so it didn't bother me. Yeah. And then a couple hours later, I was working at my desk with an upright posture, and my girlfriend she comes up to me, she says, "Nick," because you know she doesn't call me Chewy. She says, "Nick, your back feeling okay?" I said, you know what? It is. It's crazy. And so then I started taking the tinctures, liked it. And then uh, Charlotte's Web contacted us a while ago, a couple of years ago. And, you know, they were like, hey, would you like to do a you know, partnership? And I said, well, let me try your stuff out. You know, because, again, I'm big about that. Like, it, Eugene will tell you, anytime someone says, hey, you got a podcast. Let me give you something. You know, we're like, well, let me try it first because I don't want to. I'm not going to rep anything I don't like. I just can't do it. Um, and I liked it. I like their product. I think the, the products taste good. They uh, they are they're effective. It, it's the dose is actually what it says it is. Whatever whatever is on this little thing back here is what's actually in it. And again, maybe that doesn't seem like a big deal to you, but there's a lot of companies because any any Yahoo in his friggin' bathtub can mix some CBD together and package it because it's unregulated. Because I mean, there's a million CBD companies out there, right? Um, and sometimes they're not good. And there were CBDs that I would try that, like, I would use them. And, and people sent me stuff. They'd say, hey, try, try our CBD. I s- sent me some. I didn't like it. I didn't feel anything from it. I didn't get the same effect. And I, all of a sudden, those little things that th- these were helping me with came back. And so I, uh, I've been with them for a couple of years now. I like their stuff. I use it uh, every night before I go to bed. Bedtime for me is my favorite time to use it because it kind of chills me out. So I'll take about 30 minutes to an hour before bed, and it helps me get to bed super, super easy. Um so if you want to check that out, you can use a, uh, use the promo code Jiu-Jitsu. You go to charlottesweb.com, uh, use the promo code Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, other sponsors, Matt at Epic Roll. If you want to check his stuff out, he's got everything from Jiu-Jitsu gear to apparel. It's all priced well enough. And, uh, again, he's got some really cool designs on all of his stuff. And awesome it's, stuff. And it's it's clean design. So, like, for me, I'm not a... I'm not a big fan. Like, for instance, back in the day when all the affliction stuff was going on and they had all the skulls and the rhinestones and all the crap all over the shirts. Again, I'm not saying anything if it was your thing, but I just wasn't a big fan of it. It's just too much, right? And his designs are very, like, subtle. It's just very simple and it's clean, and I like that. That's the kind of stuff that I like to wear. So if you're kind of similar to that and you like clean-looking stuff uh, that you want to rep as far as jiu-jitsu goes, you can check out his website at epicrollbjj.com. Promo code is jiu-jitsu. And then the last two things that I will leave you with, and then I'm, I'm done talking because I know I'm like throwing stuff out there. One, 99 cents on the YouTube channel. You can click. We have some behind the scenes stuff that I put up there. Everything from, it's like just diff- random stuff that we post from the classes and some random stuff that I post from like, just if I'm talking in the car about something I want to share with you guys, I put it up there. Um, and those don't, those those are here. Um, but if you guys are interested and you want to support the podcast, we have a Patreon for the podcast and it has a couple cool things with it. One, there's every guest that we have, we have podcast extra. So there's some questions and stuff that we talk to about that with that guest. Um, sometimes it's jujitsu related. Sometimes it's not. We have everything from warm up videos. Like some of you guys were asking for like warm up exercises and stuff. Eugene has a warm up video inside the Patreon. Uh, we put together, uh, Joe and I have our, 
our like beginners lifting template in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I've got some stretches, some stretching videos that I use in there. Uh, there's also some different videos that I just that we put up there from my training and different things like that and rolling videos. And then we also have an option that comes up every two weeks, which is uh, which I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna do this week since I'm gonna be in Costa Rica. But every two weeks we do a jiu-jitsu, like a like kind of a live hangout on Zoom where I sort of talk about something and then get to answer some questions and just kind of bullshit with you guys a little bit directly live. And it's usually very small. It's usually like usually about 10 of us. Uh, so again, if you'd like to kind of check that out, you can go over to patreon.com slash the jiu-jitsu podcast and you get details on that. And uh, with that said, guys, that's it. So there's a, I, we, I, it. we lost like 30 of you guys. Someone said, Chewy, I'm not listening to your stuff. I'm getting out of here. 30 people left. You guys are sticking around. Thank you. <laughs> Just we appreciate it. <laughs> we always go on some, some rambles at the end. So let's see. What do we, what, someone says, who would win in a street fight? Vladimir? BJJ, bro, BJJ isn't made for the streets. You couldn't get it close. Oh, okay. someone's just making some jokes. Okay. They're being so anyway. Funny. All right, I was making sure. I was like, didn't know if we were controlled. But anyway, guys, hope you guys have a, a good weekend. Thank you for uh, for joining us. And uh, I'll try to get some clips for you while I'm down in Costa Rica. And uh, don't rub it in, Chewy. Don't I'm, rub that. You're you're getting mm-hmm. you're getting jealous. I am. I when, am. When you go to Hawaii soon, I'm gonna like do so, some. Let's hope I make it. Yeah. Let's hope they let us go. Thank you, guys. See y'all next time. Later, guys.